Hello, my name is Evgeny Permikov. This is going to be my video response to data literacy assignment, which I intend to use for professional development in my current school. So hello teachers, and today we are looking at data literacy. My hope is that by the end of this short video clip, you will be more equipped to use data to improve students' achievement. For this presentation, I'm going to be referring to the article Data Literacy and What Educators Learn and Struggle With During a Data Use Intervention. And I will leave the link to this article in the description as well so you can access the, the entire article and read it for yourself. First of all, let's answer the question, what is data literacy and why we as educators should talk and learn data literacy as part of our professional development. Authors of this article define data literacy as ability to set a purpose, collect, analyze, and interpret data, and take instructional actions. So that's the definition of the data literacy. Let's now quickly talk about why we should study this. Authors of this article state that we as educators often use only our education act and experience to make Decisions which can lead to making incorrect decisions such as adjusting our instructional practice to the wrong group of students. So it's very important to uh, use data to make decisions, practice that authors refer to as data-based decision-making or DBDM. So let's quickly look at the framework that we can use at our school to use data to formulate our instructions. So the data-based decision-making starts with setting a purpose. Why is it that we are collecting data? What is the problem that we are trying to solve? Uh, what is the hypothesis that we have that we want to prove wrong or that we want to resolve? So this is the first step of setting a purpose. Why is it that we are collecting data? The second step that we need to take is to start collecting data, um, keeping our uh, problem in mind, keeping the data collection methods, and also evaluating data collected. Once our, the data has been collected, it's important to analyze the data. By analyzing the data, we basically interpret the data in a more uh, user-friendly, more presentable way. Oftentimes we use spreadsheets such as Numbers, if you are a Mac user, or Microsoft counterpart Excel. So we try to represent data in a more meaningful way. So we can transfer the data to information, which is the next step, interpreting the data. Once we uh, formulated and analyzed data, presented it in a more meaningful way, we can start interpreting the data and making some conclusions. Are, that are linked to our problem. Also, I want to <clears throat> draw your attention to the fact that in every step of the database decision-making, we always refer to the problem definition. The problem that we define when we set the purpose is super important to keep this in mind, to understand why we're collecting this data in the first place and what is that that we are trying to solve. Database decision-making rounds off with the final step of taking instructional actions and this is where we implement improvement measures based on the data that has been collected and so once the cycle is completed we again set the purpose collect the data analyze the data interpret the data and take instructional actions so very straightforward process which i think we as a professional learning community at our school can take uh, to not only rely on our intuition and what worked in the past, but actually looking at some of the statistics, some of the stats, some of the data um, that is up to date and that is linked to our purpose or the problem that we're trying to solve. Today, we've looked at data-based decision-making, which is defined as the ability to set the purpose, collect the data, uh, evaluate the data, then interpret the data and take instructional actions. Uh, we also talked about why it is important to um, use data in, this, in, in our decision making. Uh, oftentimes, we rely too heavily on our intuition or on what worked in the past, which leads to misapplied instructional interventions or misapplied instructional practices. So it is very important and helpful to use data meaningfully and judiciously to inform our practices. 
I hope this quick tutorial on data literacy was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and we can follow up with more in-depth look at data literacy. Thank you for your attention and have a wonderful day.